everybody! How is it going? Welcome to Brick Building Fun. Uh, today we have another very special episode for you. I will be interviewing a guy by the name of Dave Pickett. He is the, uh, the creator of Brick 101. Uh, you can go to his website at brick101.com or you can find him on YouTube. I'll put links down there. So uh, hopefully this will turn out good. So I'm sure it will because it's me. Come on. All right. Enjoy. Hello, Dave Pickett of Hi. Brick 101. That's me. Yes. Um, all right. I've got some questions here all prepared. Uh, okay. Uh, how did you get your channel started? Yeah, so I actually joined YouTube back in 2007. Uh, so that was the very early years of YouTube. Uh, and my channel at that point was called Fallen Tomato. Uh, it's still up there. Uh, that has a bunch of my early Lego animations and other random video projects I did. Uh, so I did that for a couple years. And then uh, uh, I realized at that point, you know, YouTube, you can only upload 15 minutes at a time, so you had to have short videos. So I was trying to think of what videos might work in a short format, so I came up with this concept for The Nightly News at Nine, which was a web series I uh, ran for a little bit. And so I started a new YouTube channel for that, Nightly News at Nine, and over time that morphed into what is now Brick 101. So uh, third name on YouTube, but second physical channel. So, okay. ha yeah. Uh, has it spent the most time as Brick 101? Uh, I think that was three years ago now. So I think technically it was Nightly News at 9 for uh, a good six years. So actually Brick 101 is still a small part of the history. Mm. But, um, you know, I think that uh, it's definitely grown the most as it's been Brick 101. Mm. Uh, so uh, that's that's the name most people know at this point. I think most people understood why I rebranded because uh, most of my content now is, um, you know, how to builds and uh, reviews. So it's not really Nightly News at Nine doesn't explain what my channel is the way Brick One Hundred One does. Yeah, so. yeah. Nightly News at Nine sounds like it's a news channel. <laughs> right. Uh, and even when I was making a new show, it wasn't nightly. It was maybe one a month, if, if <laughs> lucky. So. Yeah, monthly news at nine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So that was it. That was in, back in the uh, the pre Google days of YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. Back when real money could be made. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, so I, I actually had to apply to the partner program back when that was how you got monetization. So I've been through the whole process of YouTube when you couldn't make money, the first early days, all the changes with Google Plus coming in, all that rigmarole, and the adpocalypse as well. So uh, yeah, I've I, seen got, I got hurt by the adpocalypse. I have another channel that had monetization for years. Um, but then it lost it, but you know. Uh, that's rough. Yeah, but I only need about uh, 75 more uh, subscribers to get it back again, so. Great. Yeah. All right, let's see. What, now, uh, this is the most important question to me. What kind of camera do you use to film your videos? Uh, yeah, so I am right now on a, <clears throat> a Canon 7D, uh, I think Mark II. Um, oh, that's so. a nice one. I used to be on a Panasonic Lumix GH2, which is a Micro Four Thirds camera, which when those came out, everyone's like, oh, Micro Four Thirds will be the best for stop motion because it doesn't have a physical moving shutter. It's all digital. Mm. Uh, but the thing is, uh, Dragon Frame, which is the go-to stop motion animation software, doesn't support Panasonic cameras at all. So I had a weird workaround to make it work and it was just it was insane uh, but I did that for a while and uh, but then uh, a couple years ago we were doing the magic picnic and the Lego animation book and uh, so I was working with David Pagano and I was just like David what camera are you using because it'll just be easy if I just get the same camera mm -hmm. and it'll work uh, so yeah so I've been on that for the last couple of years and it's been great um, you cool. know 
Yeah, I use a 70D myself. So oh, okay, yeah. We're, we're in the same camera family. <laughs> exactly. Excellent. Let's see. Now, in one video, um, I think it was, I forget which one it was, uh, you mentioned painting Lego figures. Is, yeah. Is that something you used to do? Yeah, I, I, I've done it a little bit. Um, you know, when I'm doing a custom minifigure and there's just not a good design that Lego has done, you know, I'll, I'll paint a little bit. Uh, I try to stay away from that because that is harder for other people to replicate if I'm doing a tutorial. You know, it's not the same as just snapping pieces together. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, definitely I, I did that more when I was a kid uh, because, and a teenager because, like, I remember there was a time before there were Star Wars Legos. Mm -hmm. And so... I painted a Yoda and a Boba Fett and a C-3PO because, you know, I really wanted those characters. Yeah. Uh, now, you know, there's so many things that Lego has done and so many uh, third-party vendors that do custom printed minifigures that there's really, you know, a rare occasion where I would feel the need to create something myself. Okay, because so. that sounded like a really fun uh, hobby. <laughs> uh, so I was going to ask, uh, what kind of uh, paint did you use for that? Yeah, I actually was using nail polish to paint uh, figures uh, because it just dries so quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, I just liked that process. Uh, I did acrylic paint for the longest time because that's just like normal hobby paint. Yeah, easy uh, to get. So those and yeah, na nail polish is also really easy to find. You just walk into like you know a Walgreens or you know CVS, and there's a whole selection of it. Unlike paint, you have to go to like a store that has little paint samples so yeah, and, and nowadays men are painting their fingernails so you don't look like such a weirdo buying it exactly exactly well that's cool yeah i'll have to look into that okay let's see let's see i have, I have down here what kind of paint did you use only if he used to paint them and stopped <laughs> let's see okay now uh do you buy your pieces in bulk or where do you get your pieces yeah so i mean i um I have a Lego collection that's built up over three decades, right? I'm 33, and uh, my collection is older than me because my older siblings had Lego before I was born. And, uh, you know, when my friends grew out of Lego uh, as teenagers, they gave me their entire collection. Oh, so nice. I have accumulated a lot of Lego uh, over the years in that way. So my collection is definitely skewed towards older pieces. Mm. So these days, I only really buy a Lego set if it's something like I really want or I have a need to review for the channel. Um, so I do buy just normal Lego sets, but if I'm specifically building something, you know, first I check my collection uh, and like, oh, I need 10 of this piece. Uh, and then I just go to Bricklink. Uh, I'm sure you're familiar with Bricklink, yeah. you know, and I just find like, okay, who has all these eight different random pieces I need in the quantities I need? And buy like that so yeah i haven't done like big vats of lego you know like some people buy because i just don't have a need for bulk in that way like because i've grown the bulk over the years already oh, i see yeah yeah i i started collecting lego in about 1992 93 and uh, i left i left all my legos at a friend's house one day and i just decided eh, i was done with them at that point and then a couple yeah. years ago i was like uh you know, I've got uh, stepkids now, and they love Legos, and I started building their sets for them and thinking, this is a lot of fun. Oh, I want to start getting into Legos again. <laughs> and then I got some for a birthday, and then I'm like, you know, I'm going to start a YouTube channel. I'm going to build this yeah. stuff on camera. That's great. Yeah, uh, well, that's back to, welcome back to the fold, as, as we say. <laughs> yeah, I've got a pretty decent... I've spent a lot of money on it. i got a pretty decent collection going now. Are there any sets that you or do you do you still buy Legos now? Uh, other than you know, yeah, buy sets. Yeah, so I mean, like right now, the two sets that I'm eyeing are the Voltron set. Mm -hmm. uh, Me too. That looks incredible. Uh, and then the Harry Potter micro scale Hogwarts they just announced, second largest Lego set ever, six thousand pieces, wow. hundred dollars. That's going to be like a special reward for myself for something. So <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's hard because there's just so many sets now. And yeah. you, you, you have to be picky and choosy or, you know, just devote all of your income to Lego. So <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty much what I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's fun, though. Yeah, I got way into uh, Nexo Knights. Uh, 
Mm. And I've got a few of the ideas sets. Oh, ideas are great, yeah. Yeah, I got the Yellow Submarine. I've got the uh, the Big Bang Theory. A lot of fun. Yeah. Got the I've, been getting, so. I've been getting a lot of brick heads just because they're so small and adorable and like they often have really great pieces in them too so oh yeah that, yeah yeah i have the back to that, the future one yeah that. it's the only one i have so far let's see let's see um oh yeah uh, i was gonna say um using the lego hands as fingers i thought that was a brilliant idea it looked really good thank you and you said oh yeah. people think it's lazy and no it's not lazy it's it's <laughs> cool no, I mean, minifigures have so many great, interesting little parts on them, their hands and their arms. Um, I've definitely used, I've used minifigure arms as fingers as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, so I stole that idea from another Lego fan builder. You know, that's what's great about, you know, Flickr and following the Brothers Brick uh, is just you see all these other really talented builders who have just like a really clever idea for something. And then you're like, that's amazing. Yeah. I'm going to that back here in my brain it'll be useful sometime yeah, so yoink my idea now <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's cool yeah yeah i need to do more of my own uh, uh i need to do more of my my original builds because so far i've mostly just done sets and that, yeah. that's fun too but I think that's pretty common for people getting back into Lego. When I got back into Lego, at, when I had disposable income as an adult, mm -hmm. uh, I, I never really left Lego, but I just wasn't buying a lot in college. Uh, you know, you know, I spent those first like couple years just being like, let me buy current Lego sets and build them again, because like the techniques just in a normal Lego set now are way above what I was doing as a kid. Mm -hmm. So. I was just like building those sets and being like, "Whoa, look what they did!" Oh, and yeah. you know, yeah, I remember uh, trying to build, um, trying to build robots and mechs back in the day in the '90s, and you couldn't. They just, and now yeah. th there's they, they've got those those ball joints. Yeah, it makes it so easy. Yeah. So yeah, no, I I definitely did the same thing. So yeah, one of my first uh, original creations in 2007, it was just like. A bunch of the like uh, plant pieces and a diver on like a base plate, and I was like, "Look, I made something." And it was just, it was terrible, but uh, yeah, I think uh, that was like the first one I did and shared as an adult. Yeah. It's probably still on Eurobrick somewhere. So mm, nice, yeah. It's a beginning, you know. That's cool. Let's see. Okay, now, uh, do you script out your videos or do you just go? Yeah, so I mean, most Brick 101 videos, you know, I'm reviewing the set, I'm building uh, a mock. Uh, I don't need to script those because it's mostly like the thing in front of me is, you know, all the <laughs> script that I need. I'm just talking about a Lego set or building something. Um, if it's something, so I've done these role play videos uh, called Brick Verses. Um, so that's like a series I've been doing uh, where it's more of a narrative. Those are scripted. We do voice recordings. Now, before we actually do the, um, the role play, with, we just put the characters on clear plastic Lego sticks and bounce them around in front of the camera. So when we started doing those, I would actually do the voices as we were puppeting, like into the camera at the same time, which was uh, time efficient. But it's also really hard to like switch character voices in a multi seen while also like remembering to puppet uh, appropriately so now we record the voices ahead of time and then just puppet to the pre-recorded stuff so those are definitely the most intense things that i produce on a regular basis now uh in terms of production mm, that's cool. cool okay so you script out what makes sense to script out exactly yeah that's cool yeah i noticed you have a very uh very uh, easy casual style like you're like you're really talking to someone yeah, no, I mean, I feel with YouTube content, like, that's part of, you know, there's not necessarily an expectation that it's, like, you know, HBO quality production level. Uh, so I definitely just go for it. And, um, you know, if it's a funny mistake, I'll leave it in. If it's just a you know, inconvenient mistake, I'll, I'll try to cut it out. And, you know, I often have inaccuracies in my videos and people are, you know, quick to point them out in the comments. You know, uh, that bothered me at first, but now I'm like, hey, you know, it gives something, people something to comment about, yeah. so. 
Yeah, um, people are engaging, so... Exactly. Yeah, no, no, no such thing as bad engagement. Right. Although, on the internet, I don't know, that might not be true. <laughs> we'll see. Okay, uh, let's see. Where do you get the music you use in your videos? Yeah, I use a lot from Incompetech.com. Mm -hmm. Um, Kevin McLeod, you know, he's, uh, I think a hero to all YouTubers, yeah. uh, soundimage.org is another similar, just like one person who made a bunch of music and you can use it for free. I also, Apple had a whole bunch of m music that used to be part of the Final Cut Studio package, mm -hmm. uh, back when Final Cut was a professional level tool, they've kind of cut it down to a prosumer level tool. Um, so I still have all those music files, even though you can't like download them now anywhere. Uh, so it's all like just Apple sound, Apple loops. Mm -hmm. uh, so I have a lot of those that I've used for years. And once you know Apple loops, you will hear them in commercials all over the place because like for a decade, like everybody had those and was just using them in any uh, kind of video that didn't have budget for music. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, occasionally I'll, you know, if there's something really specific I need and I can't find it in a free source, you know, I'll go to uh, Audio Jungle or something like that and pay for the license for a song, something like that. I, I think you can pretty much either have, uh, you can have a budget for music or you can have a budget for a Mac. You can't really do both. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's cool. Okay, yeah, I use a lot of Incompetech stuff, too. I've yeah. got Incompetech in my notes here. <laughs> Incompetech? Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. So so what do you do when you're not playing with Legos? As if there's anything else worth doing. Yeah, so, um, you know, I am uh, about to have a regular full-time job again, uh, in addition to having Brick 101. Uh, mm -hmm. And um, so that's in digital marketing. Uh, so that was my career for a decade uh, before I went full-time Brick 101, and I'm getting back into that because Adpocalypse, mm -hmm. <laughs> basically. And, uh, you know, I'm still making money on Brick 101, but uh, it's nice to have um, uh, the stability of a, a regular job. Um, and then, you know, I play a lot of video games. Uh, my husband and I are super into board games. We have people over for board game nights. Uh, uh, we have a pug. She's adorable. Oh, yeah. uh, uh, we walk her. Uh, I read, you know, comics, watch a lot of TV shows. You know, I think normal kind of pop culture stuff. Yeah. Marvel yeah, movies. Basically, you, you live a cool life, basically. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Seems cool to me. What kind of board games or which board games do you do? Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, so we like, you know, like Settlers of Catan. Mm, that's a good one. Small World. Uh, what is that? Uh, Dead of Winter. Which is like a post-apocalyptic zombie survival mm. game. Um, House on Haunted Hill. Mm. Uh, uh, survival stuff. horror board yeah. games. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, w what's really fun, I think, is when you can find a great game where you're all cooperating as a team mm. uh, and like working towards a, a goal. Uh, yeah. So Dead of Winter is like that, and there's other board games like that. Um, Arkham Asylum, or not, no, Arkham Horror. Arkham Horror is what it's called, uh, where you're fighting Cthulhu-type monsters as oh, a team. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah, we, um, around here we are, we've we been getting very into The Wizard Always Wins. Hmm, it's I've not a, heard of that. It's a really good one. It's like strategic, uh, very luck-based also. It's cool. I highly Just recommend it. Does the wizard always win? Yes. We, okay. we You have a bunch of characters you uh, you have to choose between every round, and um, when you uh, you can only win if you choose the wizard. So <laughs> that, that's when you're going for it. Got it. And I tend to go for the wizard uh, before anybody else does, and that's how I win most of the time. As Good to know. A chance. I mean, it seems like the strategy is right there in the title of the game, right? <laughs> yeah. 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 You're trying to like pick a. A jewel out of the bag of fate, basically. And mm -hmm. as soon as you have one in there, and you're a good enough level, you, you go for it. You know, you don't wait until, oh, may I'll wait till the chance is a little better, a little better, a little better. No, your chances are the best early. The first wizard, right? Mm -hmm. Got it. Good to know. I'll keep that in mind. Yeah, that sounds fun. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Uh, do people ever tell you that you're too old to be into Legos? 
Um, yeah, I mean, like that's that's definitely a, a frequent comment on YouTube. Is like, you know, uh, look at this old dude playing with Lego, uh, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but you know, Lego is just uh, an artistic medium to me. So it's like yeah. someone saying you're too old to be into drawing. You know, it yeah. doesn't make sense. Um, so uh, you know, I don't listen to those people uh, because they're wrong. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's how I see it. Yeah. Yeah. And especially, you know, being part of the adult fan of Lego community, mm -hmm. you know, I go to uh, Brickworld Chicago, which is one of the largest conventions in North America. There's 900 res registered fans of Lego who come, and then wow. thousands of people of the public who come to see our stuff. It's like when you know other adults who uh, build amazing things with Lego, it's really easy to not listen to people because you're like, no, all these other people are really cool. And they play with Lego no problem, so why wouldn't I? Yeah. Uh, and people want to come see our stuff, so mm -hmm. someone's just bitter on the internet, and that's not my problem. Yeah, I think they're jealous. You know, they yeah. they don't have any cool hobbies of their own. They want to knock everyone else's. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, do you play Minecraft? Uh, I haven't played it in a long time. I was into it for you know, like I was super into it for I don't know, maybe a year. Um, just because, you know, it's a really amazing game, mm -hmm. but, you know, it can take over your life, and yeah. uh, I already have enough things taking over my life, um, so I haven't really, I, I played a little bit on um, oh, the Wii U or the Switch recently for a video I was doing, but, uh, yeah, no, I was super into it, like, several, several versions ago, before there were horses in the game, so... Oh, yeah. That's how you can date my Minecraft like peak usage, yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, I mean I think all the Lego Minecraft sets have been um, obviously a huge seller for the company. I think it's like their third most popular line after like Town and Star Wars. Yeah, uh, I have a few of them myself. Uh, so I've been getting all of those. It's definitely something on my YouTube channel that I'm known for is covering Lego Minecraft because I was building a lot of. Minecraft characters before Lego had sets. Mm -hmm. um, so I've definitely become like a known quantity of covering that. So I, I like have a duty to cover every Lego Minecraft set that comes out. And um, yeah, they're, they're really fun. Mm, yeah. Yeah, I've got a few of the sets myself and it's nice how, uh, how easy it is to kind of make your own things. Yeah. All right. Hey. Yeah, all right, let's see here. Have you worked with other brands like Mega Blocks or Bricks Builds? Uh, yeah, I um, I have gotten super into the Mega Constructs Pokemon sets. Quite a I think few of those myself. They're really great. Um, I see Snorlax, actually, on your shelf. Oh, yeah, I actually have a, like all the Mega Constructs Pokemon over there on the shelf. Oh, nice. uh, uh, and I've got some in boxes over there I still haven't put together. Um, but, you know, Mega Constructs is a different system than Lego. They have a lot of parts that um, have studs in both directions, which makes it easy to reverse a lot. And they have a lot of um, pieces that use, like, the, um, the bar and, like, uh, hole connection as opposed to, you know, the stud-anti-stud -stud connection. So mm -hmm. they've got a very different part selection so it's a different experience but I think uh, you know the quality of the pieces is really high they also um, seem to prioritize accuracy over the system so they'll do whatever unique color they need to for Snorlax mm -hmm. but they don't have any other pieces in that color so it's hard I, I think it's a little bit harder to build um, your own creations from their stuff but for the sets themselves like uh, those Pokemon look great. So uh, I was really lucky uh, last year, Mega Constructs actually flew me up to their headquarters in Montreal because, you know, I'm a person who talks about building bricks on the internet and they wanted the opinion of some of us who are brick experts. So there was a little, uh, six of us who were up there as they called it the Beyonder Summit and they just wanted like feedback on their product. So that was awesome that, you know, the company uh, cared about my opinion. You know, Lego's never done anything like that for me. Yeah, yeah. You know, they uh, they've liked a few of my tweets 
So yeah, yeah they really pay attention to the fans. Yeah. Uh, and McFarland Toys, um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with their products. Mm -hmm. So they're a relatively newcomer into the construction space. Uh, they've only been around since 2015. Oh, I didn't know they did uh, building sets. Yeah, so they have Five Nights at Freddy's as their main mm -hmm. construction toy brand. And that's another thing that my fans were really into even before there were sets. So I was mm -hmm. doing custom Five Nights at Freddy's characters out of Lego. And so McFarlane Toys reached out to me. They sent me their entire product range wow. before it was on shelves. Uh, I reviewed it and, you know, now they'll send me exclusive prototypes of sets before, like months before they're available, just as a preview for my fans. So uh, McFarlane, I'm actually more of an expert on McFarlane Toys <laughs> than I am Lego because I've like had every single McFarlane Toys wow. instruction product. And like, I know the people who who run it and you know we email okay. uh if they did spawn sets i would so <laughs> get those uh well you know the i'm i they might probably do that with the movie uh coming out yeah yeah but yeah cool. they've added a few different brands now so they did south park uh rick and morty last oh, year which i've <laughs> seen those i need to get some of those yeah, they're, they're really great. I mean, they put a lot of detail into their figures, um, but they still have a system of figures where you can see, like, okay, like, this is how a tall figure has this type of legs and short figures have that, and mm. some are too wide and some are three wide, but there's enough of things that you could conceivably interchange parts and all that. Mm. Uh, so they're definitely more, like, action figure level detail, but at a constructible size. They're bigger than Lego figures, but... Um, uh, I really like their their figures, uh, and that's definitely what they focus on is like the accuracy again. Um, and uh, what else? Oh yeah, they've got Cuphead uh, is another one they've got, and uh, Hello Neighbor. So they're definitely getting like the indie, like creepy video game uh, yeah. licenses. Um, but yeah, so Spawn definitely would fit totally within, and you know they own Spawn. So yeah, if there's yeah. I I mean, yeah. I was I was into Spawn, uh, you know, I was one of the, the original Spawn fans, so yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I have this uh, Assassin's Creed ship up there that I can't wait to start building. Awesome. I mean, uh, uh, that, that's not McFarland, but I mean... It's uh, uh, Mega Constructs, Mega right? Mega Constructs, or, yeah, yeah, I think it's Mega Blocks, I don't know, same thing, really. Yeah, they just rebranded from Mega Blocks to Mega Constructs yeah. last year, so... Yeah, yeah, they do a lot of cool stuff. There's there's just so much other good stuff out there. So many mm -hmm. choices. Yeah, I'll have to get some of those McFarland ones. Yeah. yeah. That sounds cool. Let's see. All right. Now, my final question here. What advice would you give to a YouTuber who is just starting out or struggling? Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, I think for me, there's a couple things, right? Like, I've tried a lot of different things on YouTube over the years. We started talking out about the three different names I've had on YouTube over the years and you know that was me kind of refining my youtube approach right i started out just putting some lego animation stuff and like other random films i had done and it was just it was kind of too disparate it didn't have a clear focus mm -hmm. uh, then i focused way down to a web series but that took too long to produce so it wasn't a good fit for youtube because if i only put out one video a month youtube forgets about me yeah so then i kind of hit on the uh how to build content and reviews is something I can do on a more regular basis. Um, you know, also with how to builds, like no, that's something that a lot of people haven't done on YouTube. There's only a few few of us who actually show step by step instructions on YouTube. Jay Steffer uh, is a, another one who does that, but uh, there's not there's not a lot. And I also take yeah, I've requests. That too. So taking requests and showing instructions. You know, those are things that uh, really helped me grow my brand. But I think it's also just like paying attention to comments. Like I talked earlier how I'll ignore a hater. But if people continuously ask me for a thing, um, you know, I don't have to do it. But, you know, it is literally a great source of information about what people want to see. Yeah. So I think um, being thoughtful about, you know, knowing the rest of the space that you're in, you know, what are other people doing with Lego on YouTube? Where can I differentiate myself, you know, by focusing in on a theme or focusing in on, you know, a, a type of content that 
not a lot of people do. Um, and, you know, I also watch a lot of non-Lego YouTubers that are in the toy space more generally. Mm -hmm. And I get a lot of ideas from them. Like, um, one video I've done that's super successful is, like, I literally just show every single figure um, from Five Nights at Freddy's that McFarlane Toys has done, right? And it's it's not like a review necessarily as it is just like an information catalog. Mm. But that has gotten, you know, 7 million views or something like that because um, there was nothing else like it and kids wanted it. And so, you know, but I got that idea from a non-Lego YouTuber, uh, you know, a different toy reviewer. Mm. Uh, the role plays I've been doing, that was kind of influenced more by the toy space in general than Lego specifically. Um, so uh, one thing I do um, with my channel is, um, you know, YouTube, if you go to your channel page, you can feature channels. And then below that, YouTube will say, like, here are similar channels. So I always click on the channels that are YouTube thinks are similar to mine. And then I go to those channels and I click on the channels YouTube says are similar to those. And so that's like how I built out my whole network of like, these are the people I need to be paying attention to. YouTube thinks are similar. These are my peers. Uh, my competitors to a certain extent because you're, you're we're all competing for attention but yeah. that's how uh, you know i kind of stay up on what are other people doing where can i get ideas be inspired um in addition to just doing whatever i do as well as i possibly can and continuing to try new things and then if it works do more of it and if it doesn't work you know just you know maybe do less of it yeah. so um you know i i think just being open to experimentation um trying different things, seeing what works, and then, you know, doing more of what works. Yeah. Okay. Good advice. I will keep that in mind. I mean, my friend will keep that in mind who is struggling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, it's, it's a journey. That's Absolutely. cool. Okay, well, that's all the questions I have for you. I think this went really well. Yeah, absolutely. This was great. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, You're welcome. Talk to you later. Or all later. right. Yeah. <laughs> Take care. Yeah. And yeah, be free to hit me up if you ever have specific questions or advice. I actually just did a keynote at Bricks by the Bay that is about how I built my business on YouTube. So that'll be going up soon, which I think will be something you'd find very interesting. So. Oh, cool. Okay, yeah, I'll keep up with what you're doing. You will probably hear from me again. Sounds great. Wow. All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, good luck with everything. Yeah, thank you. You too. All right, have a good one. Bye.